What's happening around the world and what's happening here at home? A very good evening to you and welcome to Primetime News. I'm Sandro Ferdinando. Let's take a look at your headlines for tonight. No second chance to save Sri Lanka. Central Bank Governor warns. The fundamental rights petition requesting an order to conduct an investigation against those who are responsible for the economic crisis, including former President Gotabe Rajapaksha, former President Mahind Rajapaksha and Basil Rajapaksha, taken up before the Supreme Court for the third day. The opposition's view on the committee to look into factors that led to Sri Lanka's bankruptcy. An investigation committee appointed to look into the death of the woman who underwent an eye surgery. Questionable anesthetic injection varieties removed from use. GMOA reveals issues in the health sector. A letter to be sent to the houses of Aswasuma applicants after an appeal hearing. Elephant attack on civil security officer on duty. First up in news here at home, speaking to the AFP Central Bank Governor, Dr. Nandala Virasinghe said there is no second chance to save Sri Lanka from the economic crisis. So this is the lesson that we need to learn. Of course, last 16 times, what happened basically we, when we were facing balance of payment or stress situations, we asked for a bailout package. I gave it for certain conditions and we just stabilized the situation, balance of payment prices. Stabilize and get back to normal. And once we get back to normal, we just forget about it and take two steps backwards. Because once you are stabilized, we forget about the right policies that we agreed. Fiscal consolidation, circular reforms, all were basically a lot of times so reverse. And then we get back to the same situation. But this time, 17th time is a different. It's not only balance of payment crisis, it's a debt crisis. The two crises coming together at, the, at once. That is why it's more difficult this time than any other time because not only the address in balance of payment building of reserves, but also to bring debt restored is sustainable. Those are two key objectives. So we only will have to understand this time, if we are trying to go back to another program, that will be the most difficult and I think that will be the end of the story. So basically there's no excuse this time, no second chance. We have to get it right this time. Get it right this time and ensure we will not go back to the structure again. We will not have a balance of crisis again. That is that will have to be ensured. This is where I think crisis is an opportunity. Central Bank Governor Dr. Nandalal Veera Singha speaking to CNBC said that interest rates needed to be reduced further for Sri Lanka's economy to recover. He said in an interview on Friday, a day after a massive cut in policy rates, that there will be more rate cuts to come. He said, quote, if you look at the future, forward-looking inflation, we see very clearly end of July inflation will be 7% by single digit and by the end of year, inflation will be low single digit, end quote. He also said, quote, we hope that rate cuts can be some sort of support for the recovery for the second half of the year and obviously for the next full year, we expect the country to bounce back to positive territory." End quote. The fundamental rights petition, which have been failed requesting in order to conduct investigation against those who are responsible for the current economic crisis, were taken up before the Supreme Court for the third day on Friday. The fundamental rights petition was filed against former President Gotabe Rajapaksa, former Prime Minister Mahind Rajapaksa and former Finance Minister Basil Rajapaksa, former Central Bank Governor Ajit Nivat Kabral, Professor W. D. Lakshman, former Presidential Secretary P. B. Jayasundara and the then Cabinet. The petition will be taken up before the five-member Supreme Court bench consisting of Chief Justice Jayanta Jayasurya, Buwanak Aluvihare, Priyanta Jayawardana, Vijit Malalgoda and Murdu Fernando. 
President's Council Upul Jai Surya presented the facts on behalf of Professor Mahi Mendes and others who had submitted the petition. President's Council Upul Jai Surya pointed out that the government lost 35% of its income after former President Gotabi Rajapaksa implemented a tax cut of 600 billion rupees. He also pointed out the tax cut led to a significant rise in profit of multinational companies that were subject to tax concessions. He further pointed out that the tax cuts did not benefit the ordinary citizens and it was not formally approved by the cabinet. President's Council Upul Jai Surya also pointed out that proper legal provisions with regards to the tax cuts were taken a year after the decision was made. Who is responsible for the country's bankruptcy? Were leaders who made promises able to stop rampant corruption? Do you remember the central bank bond scam? Transactions taken place in favor of one particular company during the central bank bond issuance in 2015 and 2016. The loss incurred by the Employee Provident Fund was $8 billion. Sri Lankan Airlines. The deal to purchase 10 aircraft to Sri Lankan Airlines in 2013. Information came to the forefront on a commission of 16.4 million US dollars. The deal to conclude after paying 1.7 billion rupees and without obtaining a single aircraft. In the end, the national airline became bankrupt. Coal deals. Do you remember? The loss incurred in millions in 2016 through advantageous purchase of coal that could have been purchased through a transparent tender process. As soon as he came into power, former President Gotabe Rajpaksha allowed a massive tax concession to large-scale companies, resulting in the loss of 600 billion rupees in state revenue. Do you remember the sugar scam? By changing the import tax on sugar during 2020 and 2021, the government lost a revenue of 15.9 billion rupees. The change in tax on coconut also resulted in the government losing a massive amount of revenue. Apart from these, the infamous hedging deal, Greek bond scam, renting of agriculture ministry buildings in Rajgiriya, Malvana land deal, deal to purchase 50 generators to the CEB, irregularities of the funds of Divinaguma, security insurance transactions, overseas employment insurance and deals made in investment deals for property in Colombo are some reported instances of corruption that cost the nation billions of rupees. Large-scale projects that were constructed resulting the country entering into debt the damage made to the agriculture sector of the country due to the inept decision to ban the importation of chemical fertilizer. The following instances led the economy to chaos. Against the backdrop where tax revenue was lost, the production sector was severely impacted. Do you remember the TAB deal which allegedly cost billions to the country? Corruption allegations leveled at a time when the country could have obtained compensation for the Express Pearl disaster. Experts say the compensation payment received is nowhere close to the cost of the environmental and economic damage incurred by the incident. This was how Sri Lankan governments functioned during the decade leading up to the economic crisis. Who were the ministers and parliamentarians that made and supported these decisions? Where are they today? The Prime Minister from 2015 to 2019 was Ranil Vikramasinghe. He is now the President. Ministers of the good governance regime that supported the bond scam are in the opposition. The ruling faction during President Gotabe Rajapaksha's administration is still the majority in Parliament with many holding ministerial portfolios. Against this backdrop, another working committee has been appointed to look into the factors that led to Sri Lanka's bankruptcy. Meanwhile, convening a media briefing, the Samagi Janabalavege expressed the following views regarding the anti-corruption bill and the special parliamentary committee appointed under the chairmanship of SLPP General Secretary Sagra Karyavasam into factors that led to Sri Lanka's bankruptcy. We can see that this government brought ordinances regarding fraud and corruption to punish them and stop them. They have proved once again that they do not have any interest in doing so. First, they delayed bringing the anti-corruption bill. Then the bill was debated and now they are delaying the passage of the bill with all the amendments. Who is influencing this? We can see that Basil Rajapaksha's party or the Rajapaksha's have influenced the ministers on the day of the parliament debate and about 25 to 30 ministers from the Pohotua went to the prime minister's office and influenced them to not pass this bill. The Rajapaksha's do not like bringing ordinances related to fraud and corruption. The fact that the Rajapaksha's do not like this was proven yet again 
in Parliament last week as they would not let this bill be passed. The world is watching. Prosecutors are not coming because this is a cave of thieves. Sagar Karyavasam, the General Secretary of the SLPP, was appointed to find the reason the country is bankrupt. Who is Sagar Karyavasam? If Sagar Karyavasam is Basil Rajapaksha, then Basil has been made the chairman to look into why the country has gone bankrupt. Now we can't understand what kind of a joke they're doing. The current president says the reason the country is bankrupt is because of the 600 to 700 million rupee tax concessions. Basil Rajapaksha made those kind of decisions and now they have made his best apprentice the chairman of this committee. So will the citizens of this country have confidence in these committees and will the international community have confidence in them? Meanwhile, the Welfare Benefits Board states that after hearing the appeals and objections received regarding the Aswasuma's elected beneficiaries will be personally informed about it. It added that appeal boards were notified to hand out results within 20 days upon investigation of appeals and objections. So far nearly 800,000 appeals have been received. The number of objections received is close to 10,000. The Welfare Benefit Board also says it has taken necessary steps to pay the benefits related to this month before the end of the month. <laughs> The appeal period ends on the 10th. Not everyone will be able to submit their appeals during that period. Everywhere that I went to and spoke to the people, they say their appeals would not be accepted by the divisional secretariats. Close to 700,000 appeals have been submitted. That is not the truth. If you think about it, there must be 1 to 1.5 million appeals that should have been received. Under the 22 criteria, it primarily talks about not receiving subsidies and the cutting off of subsidies. If you don't correct this, it will cause a huge problem. While court proceedings are ongoing, protests have not begun yet. If it is necessary, we might have to organize protests if they do not recognize this problem as a government. This is done by the Welfare Benefits Board and the Ministry of Finance. They have turned a deaf ear to this issue. There are a few retired members of the Welfare Benefits Board that tell different tales on media and leave. So far, nearly 800,000 appeals have been received. The number of objections received is close to 10,000. The Welfare Benefit Board also says it has taken necessary steps to pay the benefits related to this month before the end of the month. The Government Medical Officers Association says that issues of the country's health sector is fivefold. In the health sector, five types of problems have emerged prominently at the moment, especially the lack of medicine is very severe. On the other hand, there are problems with the quality of medicine, which is a situation that has arisen by bringing in unregistered medicine to Sri Lanka. The allegations regarding the quality of medicines by improper implementation of tender procedures is also an existing issue. The third matter is regarding the price of medicine. It is an unfortunate fact that the people have not received the benefit of reduction of drug prices, which should have taken place with the appreciation of the rupee currently. The fourth issue is the problem that has arisen with the shortage of human resources, especially in specialized medical units, due to specialist doctors migrating. It means that a significant number, nearly a hundred in each batch of newly appointed doctors, leave the country without accepting their appointments. Finally, in the recent past, we have seen a breakdown of machinery in many hospitals across the island. We see that the authorities have not acted properly and have not provided proper solutions regarding the situation that has arisen so far. Dates are set every day, but nothing happens. The statements made by the Minister of Health have have become a joke because the Minister of Health does not get to do what they said they would. Meanwhile, the director of the National Eye Hospital, specialist Dr. A. R. M. Taufik said a committee has been appointed for further investigation into the death of a woman during an eye surgery. The director said that the committee was appointed consisting of specialist doctors. 34-year-old Himali Veera Singh, a resident of Koskoda, Borulukatia, who was a mother of two, died after undergoing an eye surgery at the National Eye Hospital on the 5th. She had died two weeks ago while undergoing an operation to insert a contact lens at the Colombo Eye Hospital. Her last rites were done this afternoon. Meanwhile, the Director General of Health Services, Dr. Asel Gunavardhana, stated that the batch of questionable vaccines used for anesthesia has been temporarily withdrawn from use. Meanwhile, it was reported that the CT scan machine of the Badula Teaching Hospital malfunctioned and caused much inconvenience to patients. Okay. 
These patients are not only patients in the Badullah district. There have been instances where they have been taken out to Nurelia because the scanners were broken. It is exhausting for us and we are asking for this problem to be fixed for the sake of all the people. <laughs> Every day it costs us between 700 to 800,000 rupees to take patients to the Monragal or Nurelia hospitals for a CT scan. 35 million rupees has been spent in 30 days. With that money, we could have bought 10 tubes. If the correct maintenance had been given under proper supervision, we have signs that this will last about one and a half weeks. <laughs> Meanwhile, the chairman of the Government Radiological Technologies Association also expressed their opinion regarding the health equipment crisis yesterday. As of today, there are 43 CT scan machines in government hospitals and out of these machines, 14 CT scan machines have broken down. We have only 13 MRI scanners in our hospitals and out of these machines, two are broken. The hospital system has only two PET scanners, one at the Colombo National Hospital and the other at the Apeksha Hospital. However, PET scanners have stopped working since the 26th of May this year at the Apeksha Hospital. The human-elephant conflict remains a serious issue in rural Sri Lanka. Despite elephant attacks, some people work to protect and treat elephants. The following report is from Tiripane Uttimadwa in Andhradapura. This is Ananda Jairatnage Hasita Sandruvan Jairatna. He worked as a day laborer. At the time of his death, he was 30 years old. He resided in Tirappane Uttimadua, Andradapura. He was a loving father of two daughters. Yesterday, he went to the Vannakulam forest with three of his friends to harvest honey. However, he was killed by a wild elephant. <laughs> No matter how much trouble the wild elephants cause the village, ultimately it is only people that will help the elephants when they are in need. An operation to rescue an elephant and her calf who had fallen into a well in Galgamwa, Vavaranvatiya, was launched with the intervention of the Galgamwa wildlife officials. After several hours, these officials were able to rescue the elephant mother. However, the civil defense officer who came to the aid of the elephant was unexpectedly attacked by the mother. The injured civil defense officer who was admitted to the Galgamwa General Hospital was transferred to the Anradhapura Teaching Hospital for further treatment. While elephants appeared near the Rambava Rotavava area and attacked a few houses, the elephants have also caused significant damage to the crops harvested during the Yala season. No matter how severe the human-elephant conflict gets, elephants bring a surreal beauty to our environment. As everyone is aware, the treatments of the elephant named Agbo is still continuing. It is reported that after receiving treatment for nine days, Agbo has recovered to a certain extent. Today, human lives and wild elephants are lost due to the human-elephant conflict. The informal development projects carried out by the country's authorities and officials and their inability to solve this problem has become the reason for this conflict. But in the end, it is innocent people and elephants that have to bear a brunt. News first with the people. The Polonaro electorate meeting of the SLPP took place on Saturday. The Polar Naru electorate meeting took place with the participation of the General Secretary of the Sri Lanka Podujana Pirumana Sagra Kariyavasam. We feel sorry that the current government has not yet been able to at least record a statement from those who attempted to set fire to parliament because the person who stole the dog from my house was imprisoned. Now there is another initiative called Aswasuma. There are issues in its selection processes. Those who deserve to be included in it are not. But the amounts that should be given have risen. Then who has been given the benefits? How were they chosen? Mahindra Rajapaksa took the leadership, saved this country and strengthened this country economically. When the leaders who were developed, loved and protect the country are being pointed fingers and named thieves, you are the ones who stood against it. There is a massive attempt at destroying powers of society and in turn to destroy society. As long as we are the power you give us, 
the next president will be introduced by the SLPP and the power of parliament will also be with the SLPP. The United National Party's Kuliapite Balamandala meeting is held on Saturday. A group of ministers, including Minister Manushinana Ekkar, United National Party's Deputy Leader Akhil Viraj Karevasam, attended this event. He is the leader who was able to take matters to his own hands and save the country. Ranil Vikrama Singh is the leader who was able to save the country and save the people. All these parties will start joining. The UN people become a prominent party in the same way other parties are also the same. If the parties fail, the biggest group of the party will come forward to support the president. That is discussed. If we consider the team that stands with Ranil Vikrama Singh, he has all the qualifications. I do not think that the people are ready for any more experiments. That is why the SLPP and other diverse people join us and show support to the president without hesitation. Today we all join together for an election. Alliances are made. Therefore, strong alliances can be formed under the leadership of the UNP. Chairman of the Samagi Jalal Vege, Field Marshal Sarath Ponsega, participated in a program held in Gamba on Saturday. The workshop was held in Yakala under the theme The Unarmed Nonpartisan Struggle Towards a People's Revolution. A group of political activists representing the Gampa district, including the youth, participated in this event. The keynote speech of the workshop was delivered by the chairman of the Samaki Janabala Vegia, Field Marshal Sarat Fonseca. <laughs> I still remember during the good governance regime, Ranil would claim that Mahinda was a thief. Then Mahinda would claim that Ranil was the thief. Now all of them have come together and are calling us thieves. Now they have introduced the Anti-Corruption Act. If someone steals some coconuts and goes to jail for two years, then can we not throw those who have stolen millions until the country went bankrupt to jail just for a year? There is no issue in the laws of this country. There is no need for new acts. Our issue is that the process of ensuring justice does not take place properly. When we come to power, by using the Existing laws in just 24 hours, we will bring the corrupt before the law. The price of crude oil in the world market increased significantly on Saturday. Accordingly, the price of a barrel of crude oil on the Brent market rose by 2% and was recorded at $78.47. The price of a barrel of crude oil in the US crude oil market was at 73 US dollars and 86 cents. For many, rain can be a blessing at times, but not for all. The following report is from Dehio Vita Valdenia in Kegol. This is the Dehio Vita Valdenia village in Kegol. Many in the village work in the rubber industry. The only access to this rural village is through a small stream of water. Everyday school children in this village remove their shoes and socks to cross this stream of water. However, during heavy rains, both parents and children of this village are trapped on both sides of the stream. For a long time, this issue was ignored by authorities. Gammatha took initiative and started a project to build a bridge for the villagers to cross the stream. Kushlani Amrasurya from Colombo joined hands with Gammatha in bringing this project to fruition. Under three months, Gammatha was able to provide a bridge to Valdenia. Today, school children in Valdenia are not walking to school barefoot. Children are not weeping at homes, waiting for their parents to come home. Today, the people of Valdenia are smiling in joy. Children of this village wore smiles that money cannot buy. And what more can Gammatha ask for? Gammatha. For the people, by the people. Sri Lanka's one and only natural wall of defense, mangroves, has been threatened due to ad hoc activities as well as improper management that go back several decades. The following report was produced by News First, Zulpik Farzan with camera operator Prasad Purnimal. Make 
කඩලාන මේක බීරලා තියෙන තමයි දැන්ටමත් මේ මාළු ටිකක් හරි මේ ඉන්න ටික හරි ඉන්නේ මේ කඩලාන හින්දා. බෑ මේ කඩලාන නැතුගේ දවසට මේ මාළු මුකුත්ම නැතු යනවා. විවුරු කාදිනි වෙලා මේ ඔක්කොම ගොඩ වෙයි මේ කලපු නැතු වෙයි. මේ කඩලාන ආරක්ෂා කරගන්න එක තමයි රජය විසින් කරන්න ඕන බලධාරීන් මේ කඩලාන ආරක්ෂා කරන්න දැන්ටමත් මේ ආරක්ෂා කරනවා. නමුත් තවත් ආරක්ෂා කරලා මේ මේ සුරක්ෂිත කරන්න කියලා හැම වකියුත් නිර්ධාරණයකින් ඉල්ලා සිටි. මෙතන තියෙන්නේ දැන් අර ෆාම් මනම් නම් හදනවනේ. लोकेोलियम उत्साहन प्रबल विधियाँ टेक प्रति मिस समागाव संधा योद्धा का इदाम थाव मत पुरुषां कमक कराने सियालक मात पात करेगा ने कार्लोआन नेवत वगा के लिए में वर्षों राम की आत्मा करने इतिंग ऑक्सीजन आप इटे लाभा देने वाला कार्लोआन पार्षद पात दिए उद्मा कार विधियाँ टेक इतिंग में इस आप इटे ऑक्सीजन आप इटे नोमिले A seminar organized by the National Chamber of Exporters of Sri Lanka was held in Colombo on Friday. A seminar to create awareness on the removal of simplified value added tax and its impact on the export industry was held in Colombo on Friday. The National Chamber of Exporters of Sri Lanka says the decision to end the simplified value added tax will have detrimental effects on the export industry. Following the seminar, a panel discussion was held in this regard. Uh, no other country has um, uh, something called uh, suspended VAT. There is always a refunding mechanism. Uh, no other country uh, is uh, like Sri Lanka. We are a very unique country, so I think uh, we do have the need. Uh, we've created a need, and that's why the system was in place. Why is this a burning issue? It's not because of the SWAT removal, as you uh, rightly pointed out. It is because of the fear we have on the refund mechanism. Why do we have that fear? We just need to go back and see how our government systems on refunds, uh, reconciliations, um, filing, how it operates. I think there is a lot of fear, and there is a lot of good reason to be fearful. Uh, Uh, in this case so definitely we want to stop the leakages what is the percentage of leakages what is the percentage of exporters who would actually are complying and what is the leakage let's say 5% is leakage 10% is the leakage however by doing something without thinking through the entire process of refunds uh, ensuring that the cash flow of the exporters are not pulled into a system which will get which will cripple the exports that's that's what we are fearful of which will make the 90% of the exporters uncompetitive because what will happen as an exporter I, how i will think is okay i need to put in all these input costs i'm not sure how much of it will come back by when so i might as well recover as much as possible and my prices are going to be uncompetitive Senior officers from the Department of Inland Revenue, Treasury, Finance Ministry, Tea Exporters Association, and the Apparel Association Forum Sri Lanka participated in the event. The Police Special Task Force raided two secret cannabis cultivations on Thursday. 
The raids were carried out by a team of officers from the Butalapalli Special Task Force camp in Surya Ara and Nikavava under the supervision of DIG Varunja Sundara. A resident of Surya Vava was arrested and is currently in police custody. About 4,500 cannabis plants were destroyed by the police special task force. <laughs> The police special task force arrested a suspect with dusk tea in his possession. The raid was carried out by a team of police special task force officers from the Gonahena SDF camp. The SDF managed to arrest a 47-year-old suspect from Demetagoda who had 59,845 kilograms of dusk tea in his possession. The suspect was handed over to the Pamunugama police for further investigation. A press conference organized by the Kupi Collective to release a publication on labor reforms proposed by labor legal reforms rather proposed by universities was held at the Center for Society and Religion in Colombo on Friday. On Saturday, an illegitimate parliament voted and approved domestic debt restructuring, which is mainly focused on reducing the retirement funds of our working people, particularly the EPF and ETF funds, which having confidence in our state, our workers have been saving and investing in treasury bonds. And what the central bank governor and, and what the parliament have now done is that if, though, if that domestic debt restructuring goes forward, in 16 years time, 50% of their returns are going to be lost. And this is in the context of where last year, because of the currency depreciation and the inflation, the retirement funds were already 50% less in value. People like estate workers, garment sector workers, their retirement funds, if they were to get 3 million rupees in retirement funds 15 years from now, it will only be worth 1.5 million rupees. So that is what we are doing to our working people. Already real wages are down by 50% because as all of you know, food inflation has doubled. It's in this kind of a context that this labor law reforms are being brought about to make it so that people cannot resist, people cannot protest, people cannot join trade unions. This draft labor laws do not belong in this country. This is an insult to the working people of this country. The LOLC Devi Sabia program was launched to lend a helping hand to the most impoverished students of Sri Lanka. The 59th leg of the LOLC Devi Sabia program was centered around the Kalatra district on Saturday. Under the LOLC Divi Savia program, exercise books and stationary items are distributed among the most impoverished students in Sri Lanka. Hundreds of children have benefited under the LOLC Divi Savia program. This worthy initiative is a collaboration between the LOLC group and the Ministry of Education. On Saturday morning, the LOLC Divisavia team visited and gifted schooling essentials to students in the Manu Andinia Primary Vidyalaya, Sen Vicente Vidyalaya, Patirajagoda Primary Vidyalaya, Kalamulla Roman Catholic Junior Vidyalaya and the Koholana Primary Vidyalaya. School books and stationary items were distributed to the Kalmulla Roman Catholic Junior School. School books and stationary items were distributed in the Matugama Education Zonal Office. India's Federal Police have arrested three railway employees in connection with a train disaster last month that killed 292 people. A statement from the Central Bureau of Investigation, the CBI, said on Friday that two of those arrested are engineers while the third worked as a technician for the railways. The CBI launched an investigation after registering a case of criminal negligence following the June 2nd crash, which renewed questions about rail safety in India. The accident in the Balso district in the eastern state of Odisha occurred when a passenger train hit a freight train loaded with iron ore. The passenger train derailed and struck another passenger train while passing in the opposite direction. 
The two passenger trains were carrying more than 2,000 passengers. The rail disaster, one of the worst in India's history, also injured about 1,000 people. One man has been shot dead in Kenya following anti-government protests on Friday over a new finance law that has doubted the full tax and introduced a housing levy for employees. Police intervened to break up protests in the western city of Kisumu. Kenya's opposition leader has called the protests to oppose tax increases that were imposed despite a court-ordered suspension and came at a time when many people were already struggling with persistently high prices of basic commodities such as maize flour. Footage aired on the privately owned television channel showed motorists scrambling to turn around on a street within the port city of Mombasa that had become hazy with tear gas as protesters fled on foot. The private Daily Notion newspaper reported more tear gas was fired in the capital Nairobi as police sought to break up protesters who had barricaded sections of two roads. A local media outlet reported that dozens of protesters were arrested. Shops and businesses were still open in the main central business district. The Dutch government collapsed on Friday after failing to reach a deal on restricting immigration, which will trigger new elections in the fail. The crisis was triggered by a push by Prime Minister Mark Rutte's conservative BVD party to limit the flow of asylum seekers to the Netherlands, which two of his four-party government coalition refused to support. Tensions came to a head this week when Rutte demanded support for a proposal to limit entrance of children for war refugees who are already in the Netherlands and to make families wait at least two years before they can be united. This latest proposal went too far for the small Christian Union and Liberal D66, causing a stalemate. Ruthay's coalition will stay on as a caretaker government until a new administration is formed after new elections, a process which in the fractured Dutch political landscape usually takes months. According to foreign media, elections would not be held before mid-November. A caretaker government cannot decide on new policies, but Ruthay said it would not affect the country's support for Ukraine. The Netherlands already has one of Europe's toughest immigration policies, but under the pressure of right-wing parties, Rote had for months been trying to seek ways to further reduce the inflow of asylum seekers. In less than 48 hours, Meta's Twitter rival Threads has surpassed 70 million sign-ups, suspended the social media landscape and appears to have rattled Twitter enough that it is now threatening legal action against Meta. Although users sign up for threads in droves, with some clearly eager to flee the chaos of Elon Musk's Twitter, the instant success of Meta's app raises a new set of concerns. Meta has been heavily criticized for its market dominance and for allegedly trying to choke off competition by coping and killing rival applications. Now some competition experts and even some threads users worry that if the new app's traction continues, it may simply lead to the accumulation of even more power and dominance for Meta and its CEO Mark Zuckerberg. The much-awaited final of the 2023 ICC Cricket World Cup qualifiers between Sri Lanka and Netherlands is scheduled to take place tomorrow. The 2023 ICC Cricket World Cup qualifier commenced on the 18th of June in Zimbabwe, bringing 10 teams who battled for the two remaining spots in the main event that is scheduled to take place in India later this year. Thereby, host Zimbabwe, Sri Lanka, West Indies, the Netherlands, Scotland, Nepal, UAE, Ireland, USA and Oman battled it out. Sri Lanka remained the only unbeaten team and by beating host Zimbabwe in the Super 6 stage, they qualified for the ICC Cricket World Cup. Netherlands also qualified for the tournament that will be held in India after defeating Scotland in a decisive Super 6 match. Thereby, the final match in Zimbabwe between Sri Lanka and Netherlands will get underway tomorrow at 12.30pm Sri Lankan time. All matches which Sri Lanka played during this tournament was telecast live on Sirasa TV and all other matches were telecast live on TV1 and the official website of Sirasa TV. Likewise, we are ready to telecast tomorrow's final as well. And with that, Firapa Primetime News for tonight. Thank you very much for joining us. Do take care and good night.